City Manager. We're going to kick things off with an up-close interview with professional wakeboarder and Claremont champion, Rusty Malinowski. I'm Rusty Malinowski. My position here at Claremont CrossFit is a part owner with Kyle Ratray. Definitely been very fortunate with wakeboarding. I've had a lot of success. Two-time world champion, national champion. Uh, last month I was uh, representing Canada at the Pan American Games in Toronto and I took gold there so it's been a heck of a ride. The 1080 for me that was something that I was chasing really hard. Um, I was the first one to pull it off in competition but I, at the time I was really the only one that had done it more than once just even at practi out practicing or whatever so you know it, the day came and in Reno and it all worked out and I landed it in the finals which was uh, an amazing feeling just because I've been I wanted it so bad and uh, tried it so many times in different comp competitions and actually, you know, probably cost myself winning competitions going for that trick. So when it all worked out, it was just like the most amazing feeling ever. The name Bone Crusher, it's a nickname given to me by uh, the head uh, announcer that's been on tour forever. Since, uh, since I started, I was always just more uh, busy, bigger physically than a lot of the other wakeboarders and uh, just kind of my mentality of the really aggressive and go out there and get it mentality gave me that nickname. Growing up in Saskatchewan, Canada, um, we have very short summers, but uh, still beautiful summers and I had the opportunity to try wakeboarding with some friends when I was about 13, 14 years old and absolutely fell in love with it. Uh, it was like the instant passion after high school. I made the move to Florida to chase that dream and it worked out. Well, originally I lived in Orlando and then it was, uh, I think 2005, me and a good friend decided to come out to Claremont and we ended up uh, just cruising around looking for houses and we found a really nice house on Lakeshore where uh, he currently still lives right on Lake Minnehaha. It was just such a beautiful setup with the chain of lakes here and I don't know it was um, it's, it, it's felt it felt good it felt right for me just from being from a small town in Canada uh, the you know the hustle and bustle of Orlando I didn't really love like that and as soon as I got into Claremont even like in 2005 it was obviously a lot uh, slower than it is now but still it was just kind of reminded me more of how I grew up so it was a no-brainer for me I wanted to be here. Training for me is uh, is everything I absolutely love it I grew up racing motocross playing hockey doing all kinds of sports two older brothers so I've been in the gym since I was you know 15 years old and I just that mentality of you know working out and being in shape has been super important to me and then obviously how much it helped me in my career so growing up working out and then the opportunity to be um, part of a business like uh, Claremont CrossFit with my best friend was, you know, I was like, of course. You know, now we have our own place to call our own home and, you know, I love being a part of this and working out every single day. You know, for me, I like to help out, but I also love to just, I'm, I'm in here every morning. I, I train with every random person that comes here. So I just really enjoy working out with all the people and, um, you know, from here I'll go straight to the water and then I'll, I'll ride ride usually two or three times a day. Claremont has probably had the most historic wakeboarding videos ever filmed around the world. We film, out, we film here all the time. This Chain of Lakes has had more first time tricks ever done. Um, I ha happened to land my first ever 1080 right on Minnehaha. Danny Harf did the same thing. There's been countless tricks and riders that have done amazing things right here in Claremont. I guess just the fact that, you know, there is accessibility to so much water here and, you know, if it's windy on one lake, you can get to the next lake quite easy and, you know, because as wakeboarders, you, you want it to be, you know, as calm as possible. So um, I just think the accessibility to all the lakes and water here, it's, um, it brings people out here and you can really, you know, find good water usually almost every day. You know, I, I don't look at it like what I've done in the sport. I feel like what I still have left to do. I've the fear of like starting to not be at the top of my game really is enough motivation for me to get in here every single day and be out on the water. You know, I'm not one of those type of people that would, you know, ever bow down to being happy with like a 10th place overall or something like that. So I just want to make sure that I'm, you know, still currently ranked third and being, a, you know, being a competitor that people are still concerned about see me on the dock, they're like, oh crap. I have Rusty in my heat, or you know what I mean? If that ever goes away, that's probably time when I need to step away. Qualities of a champion, someone that, you know, it's the stuff you don't see them do. You see them win, but it's all those hours where you don't see them 
you know, sweating their butt off and working out and training and, you know, putting in those long days and hard travels and whatnot. So obviously a champion, someone that can perform under pressure and make it, make it happen when it counts and uh, someone that never really gets comfortable with where they're at and they're always seeking to get better. We want to wish Rusty the very best. It's now time to check out one of the hottest new sports now available at the Claremont's Recreation Center. I'm Suzanne O'Shea, the Facility Manager here at the Claremont Arts and Recreation Center, and one of the latest things we're offering is pickleball. Pickleball is a sport that combines the elements of badminton, tennis, and table tennis. The sport can be played both indoors or outdoors on a badminton-sized court and a slightly modified tennis net. But here at the Arts and Recreation Center, we're going to be offering it indoors with air conditioning. All you need for the sport is two pieces of equipment, a paddle and a plastic ball. Pickleball was invented in 1965 on Bainbridge Island, a short ferry ride from Seattle, Washington. Three dads, Joel Pritchard, Bill Bell, and Barney McCallum, whose kids were bored with their usual summertime activities, are credited for creating the game. Pickleball has evolved from original handmade equipment and simple rules into a popular sport throughout the U.S. and Canada. Pickleball came to the Claremont Arts and Recreation Center when a few seniors from the community came to us looking for an indoor place to play. A lot of the courts were very crowded, being outside in the extreme heat, it was very difficult for them to play. Pickleball also has a great social aspect to it. It allows people to come together and play and be active. So here at the Claremont Arts and Recreation Center, we can offer them times throughout the week. We're gonna be providing the nets, the balls, and the paddles. The cost is just $2 per day per person. Courts will be available on a first come, first serve basis. If you would like more information, please call us at 352-394-3500. Coming up next, the Claremont Performing Arts Center will be hosting everything from Broadway to bluegrass. We'll take you behind the scenes next on Claremont Coast of Champions. In 1958, Minute Maid created Governor's Grove near present day Kings Ridge in Claremont. The Orange Grove was a symbol of friendship and was a popular tourist attraction. There was a tree for each state and every spring the oranges were picked and shipped to all the governors. Welcome back to the Claremont Choice of Champions. Have you seen the exciting lineup of entertainers and shows coming to the Claremont Performing Arts Center this season? Well, sit back and relax as we give you a sneak peek at this new facility. Scott Davidoff, I'm the new Parks and Recreation Director for the City of Claremont. And we are here in the crown jewel of the City of Claremont right now with the City's Performing Arts Center, what we affectionately call CPAC. And it is an amazing facility that we have here now that is something that is gonna be an economic driver for the city for South Lake County, for Central Florida arts community as well. It's something that we're looking at being able to provide the highest quality uh, entertainment programs and performing arts for the residents of the city and surrounding areas. The city took over this facility, which used to be a church, and we're in the process of renovating it into a, a full performing arts theater. So we have, right now where we are in the main performance hall, we took what was a shell really that just had a very old stage, not very good condition and we're turning it into a high quality uh, professional theater now with full lighting, rigging, curtains, uh, new metal work on the stage as well, really making it something that is the highest quality, that's something that's unlike anything in the surrounding areas. Right now what they're working on is finishing up some of the rigging uh, for the curtains and the jabots that will be hanging up above the stage so that as the performances are going on on the stage, everything is framed appropriately for the stage. The performers know where all of their marks are. They're able to utilize that space. But one of the other things is that the types of curtains that we have are the same curtains that you'll see in Broadway uh, that you'll see there. And what happens is they're able to utilize that for set dressings, for different types of pieces. They're able to go behind there. It's going to screen the backstage area so that the performers really have the ability to do whatever they want and make the shows even more special so that they're not limited to what may be an inferior product where we have a stage that is going to meet all of their possible wants and needs. Re completely redoing the floor, uh, the stage floor to make it a theater quality flooring in here. Uh, we are finishing right now the metalwork on the stage, so it gives it that 
pop that really makes it seem like it's something special, something that is out of the ordinary, that really sets this facility apart from any place else. But one of the things that we're very proud about is our lobby. So it's really the welcome into the facility. We've got a beautiful backdrop of the hills and, and uh, beautiful scenery behind you as you come into the facility and now you're welcomed into a sparkling lobby that has beautiful metalwork that has wonderful um, areas throughout you'll be able to see everything that's going on we've got big screen TV in there that'll be showing information for all of our sponsors so that our sponsors are recognized it'll be showing information on upcoming performances and really it's a place for everyone to meet and greet and you'll be able to see your closest friends and neighbors and make some new friends while you're here and really have an opportunity to welcome the community in to, to what will be a premier facility in the area. Well, one of the things that we're able to provide is a appropriate green room and dressing room for all the talent that's in here. This is a first class operation. This is the crown jewel of what we're doing. And we wanna make sure that the performers know that when they come here, that's the type of service that they're gonna be able to expect and that they're gonna receive. So we've made it very comfortable in their form. We've got beautiful flooring in there. We've got great lighting in their form. So they're able to do everything that they need and be comfortable in there and wanna come back. We also have a rehearsal space, which is something that makes us more unique and very attractive to shows that are coming through the area. A lot of times these shows, as they're looking for rehearsal space and getting everything ready, they have to go outside of the area where they're performing. This way, by being able to provide that to them, and it's a beautiful facility with full length mirrors, it's got a dance floor in there, a high quality flooring, uh, we can put set dressings in there and backdrops and divide the room up however they're looking for. But what this will do is this will enable all the performers to stay here, to stay in Claremont, stay in Lake, South Lake County, and be able to utilize our facility as opposed to having to go someplace else, someplace you know, closer to the Orlando side to take care of that. We're able to be a full service facility for them, for the performing arts. Well, the Performing Arts Center really will have a, a big impact on the community in, in a number of different ways. Culturally, there's nothing like this. So we're able to bring in talent and performers and different types of acts that people may not have been exposed to. This is an opportunity to have it here in their own backyard without having to travel someplace else and to have these great programs and services and performers here right in their backyard. Uh, on an economic level, it's a wonderful time for the city and the surrounding areas of South Lake County because we're able to keep the business here. Instead of people going to Orlando to see a show or going someplace else to see a show, we're able to keep that here. People are coming in from all over the place. We've even had somebody who's specifically flying from London. They're coming here to see one of the shows. They're coming here to see Darlene Love. And we've been emailing back and forth with them and it's a surprise anniversary gift for his wife. And so not only are they coming to the show, but they're staying here in the local hotels. They're staying and they're eating in our local restaurants and they're shopping in our local stores and it's providing all that support for the local economy. And as more and more people come, it's just gonna to continue to grow and become a great economic driver for the city as well. What we have coming up in October is from October 7th to the 17th, we have Defending the Caveman, which is the longest running solo Broadway play. Then starting on October 18th, we have the Orlando Philharmonic with their focus series on the main stage, which features the music of Aaron Copeland. And if folks are interested in more information, you can visit the website at www.claremontperformingarts.com. Coming up next on Claremont Choice of Champions, we're heading to historic downtown Claremont to experience high tea at Erica's Tea Room. We'll be right back. Claremont's first motorcade in 1916 included 20 cars and 96 passengers. Early pioneer C.O. Rowe was the pace setter in his Cadillac that carried the sign, We Are From Claremont, Florida. Welcome back to Claremont Choice of Champions. We hope you're enjoying the show. Our next feature is our downtown update. Today we're taking you inside Erica's Tea Room to experience this quaint, unique place on Montrose Street. Its owners, Leela and Erica Shanoff, share their passion for the art and elegance of tea. Hi, I'm Lila Shanoff. And I'm Erica Shanoff. Welcome to Erica's Tea Room and Gifts in Claremont, Florida. We're 
three-generation female-owned business with a passion for everything tea. We have over 60 varieties of tea from all over the world, gourmet coffees to die for, and Dutch hot chocolate that will make you swoon. So creme brulee tea is one of our many dessert teas. We have on our menu of over 60 teas, we have about 15 that are considered dessert teas. All of our teas are loose leaf, they're all, all natural, no preservatives, no sugar added. We have new teas coming in that are going to be vegan, which are matcha teas. We have latte teas, which already have the sugar and milk in them. But our dessert teas are a wonderful way to get children and then also to get new tea lovers or people to fall in love with tea. They're on the sweeter side. They have a lot of different varieties, things like almond sugar cookie, creme brulee, of course, which is my personal favorite, uh, coconut macaroon or a carrot cake cupcake. And some of them are even caffeine free so people can enjoy them in the evenings without having to worry about having the caffeine and staying up all night. Well, we wanted to set this up very uniquely so somebody could come in and say, wow, look at all the teapots that you have. So we wanted it to be almost like a museum with the book built in shelves and have every teapot under the sun. So as Erica would always say, there's no teapot left unbought. <laughs> you know, somebody could come in from any different taste and, and find their teapot. When I was just a little girl, my mother and I would visit tea rooms as we would travel around the country and through Europe and we would always stop and spend an afternoon at a little tea room in a little tea shop or looking for that experience to share. Growing up in New Jersey, for every special occasion, whether it be my birthday or my mom's, or for Mother's Day, or just for an afternoon outing, we would visit a little tea shop up there and it was our mommy and me occasion. And um, as I've gotten older, uh, it just continued to be our mommy and me day out and we even now even owning our own tea shop visit tea rooms as we travel out of state and as we go on buying trips so we have this continuation and something hopefully someday I'll share with my daughter. I've been in a high pressure job my whole career over 30 years in banking I started small business units from m many of the, the top banks in the country and um, it was, this is my relaxation, this is my retirement job. And I retired 20 years early from the world of education. And so it's turning our passion and our mommy-daughter experience into something that we can share with other people and make it a memory for them. Well, Erica was always a lovely little lady. She was uh, <laughs> very well behaved and we had a very good relationship from the time she was born and it was just, she ate, was able to sit by a table from the time she was two and a half and drink a cu cup of hot tea and eat the sandwiches that they gave her. Um, so it was, it was a lovely experience. So once I tried it with her, it just continued and it became a habit between the two of us. And what I wanted to do here is to make it a little more unique. So our finger sandwiches are different than what we experienced. So I took the best of all that we, we had and changed it up for what we do here. So I have special breads baked every day with crust on, which is unheard of in a tea room. I do my own type of quiche, which are like muffins, not the typical layers of quiche. Um, we make homemade soups every day, and I take it from my family background. Like today, I was telling you I'm making an unstuffed cabbage soup, so it's unique. We, we don't want to just copy. We don't want to be copycats. We want to do things our way. And the same thing, we make all of our scones and our desserts homemade, so we think outside of the box. We kind of put a new spin on an old tradition. Uh, we have quite a number of people coming from the UK and Scotland and Ireland to visit our small town. And when they stop in, they want a traditional plain or current scone, and they're not gonna find that here with us. We do things like creme brulee or Girl Scout Thin Mint, 
scones with little Andy's mints sticking out in all directions. We do our special events like our luau that's coming up and we do a themed menu. So for our luau we're doing a white chocolate and macadamia nut scone. Some very traditional that you would find in the islands of Hawaii which we absolutely adore. It's one of our favorite places to visit and we make it into something traditional like a scone. And that's what we really enjoy doing. It allows our creativity to run rampant. Many people feel that um, our themed events bring a little bit of culture to Claremont. It's not something that is touched on in any other location in the area. So uh, t twice a month we have themed events, whether it be a tea tasting, which is an opportunity for people to explore six different teas with complementing foods, and get the education about the different types of tea, proper steeping, the history of tea, and the culture of it to our themed events, things like Gone with the Wind. And Gone with the Wind, we do for our themed events a five course sit down meal. Each course we pair with a complimenting tea because it always goes back to the tea. And then we also allow for people to have fun with the activities. For Gone with the Wind, we had a presenter who did what's under the dress. Then she did a reverse strip tease of the garments of the time and it was an incredible experience because she actually talked her way through the different petticoats and the different layers and why they were important. And it was just a different spin on something that people would never think of. So from now until the end of the year, we have two events planned for each month. Coming up soon is our Doctor Who event. We have the Rocky Horror event, which is one of my most I'm looking forward to. We also have a Christmas Carol event for Christmas. Then uh, anybody can learn about these events at our website, ericastearoom.com, erica is spelled with a K. And also on our website, you can also explore our different teas that we have and a lot of the teapots that we have available in our store are available online. So whether you're a first time tea drinker or a tea connoisseur looking to find some new flavors, come down to Erica's Tea Room and experience the joy of a high tea with us. We hope you enjoyed this edition of Claremont Choice of Champions. If you have any questions or comments about today's show or would like to learn more about the city, check out ClaremontFL.gov or call us at 352-241-7345. Until next time, you're invited to explore Claremont and see why we are the Choice of Champions.